Welcome to the ninth lesson of the Plutus Pioneer program. In this one, we're going to put together everything we learn in a final project. We are going to build our own algorithmic stablecoin. And not only the smart contracts, but also a fully functional DAP with all the bells and whistles. We'll start by learning how the algorithm of our stablecoin works. Then we use the DAP's website to deploy the smart contracts and act as users that mint and burn stablecoins for themselves. Once we have a good idea of how everything works conceptually, we'll dive into the code. We have two validators, one of them being an oracle, two minting policies, and lots of code to go through. So we'll take it step by step. I'm really excited to show you this, and I hope you are too. Let's get started. Depending on the stablecoin, you might see different mechanisms to try to maintain the peg. In this lecture, we'll implement an over-collateralized algorithmic stablecoin that uses a liquidation mechanism to incentivize stability. It sounds complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. As the name suggests, we need to provide collateral to be able to mint the stablecoin. We will use a validator called collateral to lock and release collateral in ADA. In our case, you could use different coins, but we will use ADA. And a minting policy called minting to manage the minting and burning of stablecoins. Because we use smart contracts to enforce an algorithm that tries to control the price of the stablecoin, it's an algorithmic stablecoin. The value of the collateral must exceed the value of the coins minted. This extra value that is locked but can't be minted, in our case, is the reward someone gets when liquidating someone else's position. Liquidating means burning the same number of stablecoins someone else minted to get their collateral. You can liquidate someone else's position only if the relation between the value of their locked collateral and the coins they minted with it is below a certain predefined threshold. For example, 150%. This is the mechanism we use to keep the stablecoin pegged. If the price of ADA goes up, you can mint more. If it goes down, you have to add more collateral or burn stablecoins. If you don't, someone else will liquidate your position and get that extra value at your expense. This mechanism makes it so the value of the stablecoin is dependent on the locked collateral. Because the collateral is in ADA, if we only do this with the two previously mentioned validators, we'll be pegged to the value of ADA. To peg our stablecoin to a fiat currency, we use an oracle that keeps the price of ADA in US dollars up to date to calculate the amount of collateral needed. That way, the collateral depends on the price of the dollar and so does our stablecoin. Let's see how all this works in practice. To deploy a stablecoin, the developer has to provide one Oracle validator with the USD ADA rate, meaning the price of ADA in US dollars, the collateral validator that locks the collateral in ADA, and the minting policy to mint and burn the stablecoins based on the collateral. These are the transactions to deploy the Oracle to the blockchain. The square means transaction and rounded means UTXO. First, the stablecoin developer means an NFT. So we get a UTXO in the stablecoin developer address containing an NFT. Once we have that NFT, we make a transaction to deploy the Oracle with the current price of ADA and the NFT as a value. We have to mint and provide the NFT to the Oracle because anyone can send UTXOs to an address. So to make sure that the Oracle we're using is the actual Oracle we want to use, 
we can identify it by using the NFT that it contains in its value. Those are the only two transactions needed to actually deploy an Oracle to the blockchain. But we still need the two other validators. And for that, we can just create a single transaction to deploy the collateral validator and the minting policy as reference script in some address. We chose in this case to use the always false validator. So the collateral validator is actually attached as a reference script to the always false validator minting policy as well. But in our actual code, in the example, we send it to the stablecoin developers wallet so we can keep control of them and easily change them while testing. Okay, so we have everything on chain to mint stablecoins. But as soon as we deploy the Oracle, its value is outdated. So we need a mechanism to keep it up to date. If we manage the Oracle ourselves, to keep the Oracle update, usually we need a process in our backend checking the current price of ADA in US dollar. And this current price has to come from a reliable and trusted source. For testing purposes, you could use a simple API, but in our case, we're going to provide the value manually so we can create all the situations when you have to liquidate someone else, etc. And as you can see, the transaction is pretty simple. The stablecoin developer has to consume the Oracle validator with the old rate and generate the new Oracle validator containing the same NFT, but with the new rate because the Oracle checks that the stablecoin developer is the one signing the transaction, only the stablecoin developer can update the Oracle. Okay, so now to the fun part. Let's switch to the user side and see how our user can mint their own stablecoins. To mint the stablecoins, we only need the minting policy validator because we are not unlocking any collateral, we don't need the collateral validator. The only thing we need is to actually provide a collateral, the minting policy as a reference script, and the Oracle to calculate the amount of collateral needed for the amount of stablecoins we want to mint. Once we have this, we perform a transaction that both creates an UTXO at the user's wallet with the stablecoins and another UTXO in the collateral validator address. This UTXO contains in its value the collateral and as a datum contains the collateral owner and the amount of stablecoins minted with this collateral. So, for example, if the price of ADA is one US dollar and the developer chose a minimum percentage of collateral of 150%, we need to lock in the value 150 ADA to mint in our wallet 100 stablecoins, in this case, 100 US dollars. So the important part is that the relationship between this collateral and the amount of stablecoins has to be on top of a certain threshold. In this case, in this example, 150. How can we calculate this after the fact? We need to know the exact amount of stablecoins minted. That's why we also save the amount of stablecoins minted in the collateral data. And that's pretty much it. Now we have our stablecoins and they are properly backed by an over collateralized UTXO. Now let's see how we can burn these stablecoins. To burn our stablecoins, we have to provide the collateral validator as reference script and the minting policy as reference script because we are actually running both validators. We are also providing the stablecoins to be burned and finally, the collateral that we want to unlock. Notice that to be able to unlock this collateral, the owner has to be the same one that is providing the stablecoins. And the amount of stablecoins minted must be the same amount the owner wants to burn. So in this case, 
we are referencing only two scripts and we are consuming two inputs. And as a result, the user one gets its collateral back. Now, why don't we use the Oracle in this case? Because we don't need it. We already know the collateral because the collateral is already locked in the validator. And we already know the amount of stable coins to be burned to get that collateral because that's stored in the collateral statum. So there's no need to check for the relationship between the stable coins and the collateral. Everything is already there. And finally, the most interesting case is when we liquidate someone else's position. We still use the two validators as reference scripts, but now not only we need to provide the stable coins to burn and the collateral to be unlocked, but we also need to provide the Oracle as a reference input. And in the case of liquidation, as you can see, user two provides the stable coins when the collateral owner is actually user one and user two gets the collateral. Following the same example as before, this has the incentive that user two needs to provide only a hundred US dollars worth of stable coins to get 150 US dollar worth of ADA. So there's an incentive to liquidate someone else's position. But if we could always liquidate one another, no one will ever mint stablecoins. So we predefined that you can only liquidate someone else's position if their collateral is lower than the threshold we provided. So, for example, If user one mints 100 stablecoins, meaning 100 US dollars, it has to lock 150 US dollars worth of ADA. That way, user one locked 150% of the value minted. All good so far. Now, if the price of ADA changes in a way that the value in our locked collateral is lower that 150% of the minted value, let's say 130%. In that case, anyone with enough stablecoins can liquidate our position. When a user liquidates someone else's position, it has to burn the same amount of stablecoins that were minted when the collateral was locked. But, because there's more value log, in this example, there's 30% more than the value of the stable coins burn, the liquidator takes the difference home. This means that if the total value of the log collateral is between 101 and 149% in our example, there's an incentive for someone else to mint their own correctly collateralized stable coins and use them to liquidate that position. Hence, maintaining the stable coin price stable while making a profit. And that's pretty much it. We have in place all the mechanisms needed to maintain the price of our stable coin. Finally, one last thing is the case when the developer wants to call it quits. In that case, he can shut down the stablecoin by deleting the oracle. By doing that, users won't be able to mint more stablecoins or liquidate one another because they need the oracle for that. But they will be able to burn their own stablecoins and get their collateral back. And that's it. That's how the whole stablecoin works conceptually. There are a few details regarding the implementation of them that we will go over in the code, but the main idea is the one presented here.